Inspired by a question from Cuttlefish Pie on our Head Squeezers Google Plus community, I thought I'd take you through one of my favorite bits of physics, where energy comes from. Now, in my mind, I think there are three different interpretations to this question and therefore three different answers. One, where did the idea of energy come from historically? Two, what is the energy in the universe and where did it physically come from? And three, why does the quite frankly abstract concept of energy exist at all? And trust me, the answer to that last one, I think is amazing. First up, history. The word energy derives from the ancient Greek energeia, which means activity or operation, and was probably first used by Aristotle in the fourth century. But the concept of energy didn't really emerge until vis viva or living force of Gottfried Leibniz in the 1670s and 80s. This is one of the first known applications of what's now called kinetic energy, the energy associated with motion. But the idea of energy and all its forms didn't really catch on until the 19th century with the advent of thermodynamics and a reformulation of Newton's laws of mechanics. This leads us on to the different forms of energy, which there are loads, but they can generally be lumped into two categories. As I said before, kinetic energy is all about motion, be it Sonic the Hedgehog whizzing past Green Hill or a spinning top that tells you whether you're in a dream or not. Uh, apparently I'm not. In fact, heat is also just kinetic energy. It's the average random motion of a load of particles whizzing around and bumping into one another. The other major category is potential energy, which you can think of as stored energy, be that gravitational potential energy, the energy stored in electric and magnetic fields, or even just in elastic bands. Categorizing all forms of energy into either kinetic or potential isn't always easy though. As Nobel Prize winning and bongo playing physicist Richard Feynman pointed out, it depends on the level of zoom you're looking at. Something that might be considered potential energy at the everyday macroscopic scale could end up being a mixture of kinetic and potential at the microscopic scale. One of the amazing realizations of the 20th century was that matter itself, what everything's made of, is simply highly condensed energy. That's what Einstein's famous E equals mc squared formula from his special theory of relativity says. Mass and energy are equivalent. You can release the energy stored in mass. That's exactly what happens in a nuclear bomb by very minute changes in mass. Conversely, by giving something energy, you actually increase its mass, usually by an immeasurably small amount. So energy comes in loads of different forms and it can change between them. Fundamental to this though, is energy can't be created or destroyed. It can only change form. Or as physicists say, energy is conserved. That's got nothing to do with making sure you have to leave your lights off when you leave a room. Uh, it's more to do with that when you add up all the different energies associated with an object, that always has to come to the same number. Of course, some forms of energy are far more useful than others, so you shouldn't waste it, but that's got more to do with entropy, which is a whole other topic. So if energy can't be created or destroyed, then where did it come from? It must have originated at the beginning of time itself, the Big Bang. Now, all the things I've told you are correct, but they don't really answer the question of what energy actually is. And that's because at its heart, energy is an abstract concept. But the reason why the concept exists, in my mind, is quite frankly, amazing. It boils down to such a simple idea, symmetry. Now you're most familiar, I'm guessing, with mirror symmetry, because I guess you check your hair every morning. The human body is roughly mirror symmetric. It looks the same if you flip left and right. Another symmetry is rotational symmetry. You can rotate a circle by any number of angles and it will look exactly the same. But if you take a square, uh, it will only be multiples of 90 degrees when it'll look the same. Any other angle and it'll look different. But what we care about here isn't the symmetries of shapes or people, 
It's the symmetries of the laws of physics. In particular, we care about time symmetry. The laws of physics don't change in time. They are the same now as when you were born, as when the dinosaurs roamed the earth, and even at the Big Bang. Even though all the stuff does change in time. The universe is very different now from when it was a single point at the Big Bang, got a bit more breathing room. But time is a symmetry of nature. Now, in 1915, German mathematician and theoretical physicist Emmy Noether proved that if the laws of nature have a symmetry, then there must be a physical quantity which is conserved. She showed that energy is a consequence of the fundamental time symmetry of nature. Without this symmetry, energy would not exist and nothing would exist. Noether's theorem, in my opinion and in the mind of many others, is one of the most elegant and beautiful bits of science to date. It tells us so much about why the universe is the way it is. And it's all down to symmetry. Because the laws of physics don't change from place to place, we get momentum. Because we have rotational symmetry, every direction I look, the laws of physics are the same, we get angular momentum. Another sort of rotational physics gives us the electric charge, and so on and so on. In fact, almost, but not quite perfect symmetries is where a lot of physics is going right now. It's already given us the Higgs boson and therefore the origin of mass. And it might tell us why there's so much matter in the universe and very little antimatter when we think there should have been exactly the same amount of the stuff at the Big Bang. Essentially, the way the universe is, is intimately tied to the symmetries of nature. And to me, that's just amazing.